Continuing on from my previous video update about basil, I've now switched from Lantus to a different basil called Levemir. I gave Lantus a really good go. In fact, I tried 18 different split dose permutations and I got it to what I think was as good as it possibly could have been, but it is just so inconsistent from day to day and even within the same day. I'll go into why it's such an unreliable and inconsistent insulin in another video, but some even consider it to be a dangerous insulin. After switching to Levomir <clears throat> and refining my dosage through 10 different split dose permutations, I reckon I'm pretty close to the perfect Levomir dose. Two things became pretty clear to me very early on. Firstly, Levomir is a much more stable basal insulin than Lantus. I've been able to achieve great flat lines overnight and between Afreza doses. And secondly, unfortunately, it just doesn't last until the next dose kicks in, which means the glucose levels trend up at the same two times each day for me, which kind of sucks. Levomir also has a much more noticeable peak than Lantus, which means I need to keep a closer eye on my blood sugar levels at two other points during the day. However, unlike Lantus, these peaks are like clockwork. Lantus seems to have a mind of its own and decides when it wants to peak, every day and it'll change every single day, which also sucks. Another cool thing about Levomir is the pen, which stores the size and when you took your most recent dose, which takes the guesswork out of the equation. My Lantus pen requires this giant attachment, which doesn't remember how much insulin you had, it just remembers how long ago you had it. Um, another plus for the Levomir pen is it also has half units, which has enabled me to much more finely tune my basal dose because I use 11 and a half units and 11 would be too little and 12 too much and noticeably so. But unfortunately, it's not all good news for the Levomir pen. I'm already on my third pen. The previous two have had pretty serious faults. The first fault meant I could never get a dose at all. The plunger was broken when I took it out of the box and doesn't move. The second pen was even worse. It definitely gave me a dose, but seemingly not the one I dialed. After injecting, the display that I just raved about actually displayed a totally different and higher dose. Now, I don't need to elaborate on why a fault like this is pretty worrying for a type 1 diabetic. Fortunately, I'm now on a Fresa and I don't need to worry about injecting rapid acting insulin, so a fault like this wouldn't be a problem for me. Thanks for watching.